Hey everybody, this is Katrina, the owner of COS Marketing Agency, and today we're going to talk about Google Business Profile. So for those of you who don't know, your Google Business Profile is arguably one of the most important parts of your SEO or search engine optimization. Your Google Business Profile is your profile with Google. It's also connected to Maps. So if you ever search for something on Google Maps, which most of us have, you'll see various different Google business profiles. Now, if you have a business, especially a small business, this is essential. And optimizing it is extremely important if you want to rank online. Without having it, it's going to be very, very difficult for you to gain ranking at the top of search like most, if not all of us want. So this tutorial is going to be a quick little dive into how to do optimization for Google business profile. If you need personal help with your Google business profile, or if you have any questions related to SEO or anything else, go ahead and comment below. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more valuable information. And if you need help with your own advertising, contact us directly at 407-334-9378. Thank you so much, guys. Well, I am going to go through Google business profile and some of the optimization things that you could do for an already established verified profile um as you can see here you know it's going to tell you if a profile is verified or not this is if a profile is already verified if you need to go through the verification process you have to click on the prompts that it gives you usually get an email about it set it up send your information over and then um it's up to google to you know take that information and say okay yeah we can confirm it this is a verified business so we are talking about an already established one here today so i'm going to go into mine and kind of poke around a little bit i'm not going to go through every single little detail and feature of google business profile because this would be hours i'm just going to go through a few notable things and um, you give some ideas about how to add some content to it in a way that's quick, but still, you know, helps you with your search recognition, quick on the go and things that are kind of more long term as well. Um, profile strength is uh, essentially a summary of how well optimized the profile is. Um, you'll see there are certain things, though, that certain people are just not going to get 100 percent on um number one and this is the most common you have to have a business email with google and business emails with google are um, in my humble opinion a little overpriced for what it is but essentially it's another box you could check with profile recognition i have found that this does not affect search ranking um, really at all if it does it's very negligible and unnoticeable but if it's something where you, you say hey i i want uh, to spend this extra money because i need the extra features that come with it which us we don't need because we have enough storage space and computing power if you don't and you want some built-in storage and you want some of the extra features with the custom google email then maybe that is a good thing to do um and then other than that let's Go in. Oh, and um, Google advertising. If you're not running ads on Google, um, that is a box that you would need to check to get a you know higher yield with your um, with your search ranking for Google Business Profile. So we're going to go to settings, and this is the area where you can grant somebody access to your profile. Um, essentially, if they don't have owner access, there's not much they can do. Um, other than kind of look at things or respond if somebody leaves a review, um, something that really, frankly, anybody can do. So for the most part, you want to give somebody who is going to help manage this and run this profile owner access. The primary owner is the primary owner of the account. It is their business asset and they cannot be removed. Um, so the name owner it really should just be called admin, but that's what Google Business Profile calls it. Um, go back to there. Or actually back to where we were originally um and then if you wanted to you know for whatever reason remove an account or link it somewhere else that's where you do that as well um so the edit profile section now starting out a, a google business profile this is where you're going to spend the most time because every single thing that you see here essentially is a keyword that google's going to look at and attribute to your business so you want to make sure everything's up to date and current. 
if there's one letter, one number off, you know, it's going to definitely short, um, confuse Google or potentially will. So you want to be very careful with that. And I always say for the service area, you want to keep it within um, a handful of cities within the geographic radius of the business location itself. So we have Winter Park here is one of them. I have all the things I input it first. That doesn't really matter. Just somewhere there's Winter Park and it makes sense because these are adjacent cities. Now there are some people that kind of, you know, go all over the map, literally and figuratively with the uh, locations. We find that those are profiles that are harder to rank because Google is trying to attribute search recognition in all these different places. So my recommendation is always to go locally and then, um, you know, branch out other ways with content or ads, target ads in those other areas before you do that. Um, but that is, you know, kind of what you're what you're looking at. And even in a lot of cases, they just do to maybe the city. Um, the hours on your business section in your uh, Google business profile should be the same as the website. A lot of the information that is being asked here should line up with your website and should be fairly straightforward. You have a properly set up and optimized website and you understand, um, you know, what are the best keywords for a website. It's there's going to have some similarities, some crossover, right? And if you don't have a website, having a Google business profile, um, it's just not going to work as well. You need a website, um, you need a Google business profile, and you need them to connect together. Now, these special hours are sometimes pretty easy to miss because they're going to come up uh, when they come up for you to review. And sometimes you get emails about it and it gets buried. So, you know, you like to go in here and say, are you open Christmas Eve or, or closed? If you're, if you're closed, you know, you want to put that in there. We are open those days, so we're going to leave it. Open those days, so we're going to leave it. I'm going to hit cancel. Uh, but if I wanted to put myself as closed today and not have that be like looking like it's permanently closed, I would have to, you know, do that. Um, all right. And then if you have physical locations, there are certain things that are going to pertain to you, um, including restaurants. If you are a dinner or lunch restaurant both, you got to indicate these things. It's super important, especially for that, because um, that is going to make a difference. If people are looking for a lunch special and it's not indicated that you're serving in that time, they're just going to scroll and go to the next option if they're hungry. Other things you want to designate if um, you're a veteran owned company, a uh, minority owned company, woman owned company, anything that relates to that, you definitely want to put that in there. That uh, certainly potentially help. Accessibility, a kind of similar thing, physical locations get a lot more optimization that they have to fill out or should fill out rather. There's no obligation to do any of these things, but you know, the more information you give Google that you're not paying for, you're not running an ad right now. We're looking at information to put in a profile. So why, why not to give as much information that's relevant to the business? Most of this I don't do because I don't have a physical location. So yeah, and if we spoke any other languages in there, that would be a fantastic thing to to put there uh, as well. And that's the main information that you have to make sure is filled out correctly. And um, it can be it can be easy to forget about those things, but let me tell you, it, it does help in the long run. Um, you can also put business updates. This is essentially like a post. Um, I would say part post and a part like a blog because you can make them quite long, but you know, um, most people are going to treat that more like a post. Keep it short, sweet, to the point. Direct people to your website. You know, if you have an offer, we talked about um, companies with physical locations. What about e-commerce companies that want to run temporary sales? They can include some of that in there. That incentivizes people to click a button, go right to the website, right to the sale. That's another way we get people to buy quicker. Get past that barrier of will they, won't they? Events kind of a similar thing um, you know lots of different ways you can leverage it and again I could spend hours going through every little detail and um, if I was you know if this was a client that I was managing this is uh, that is absolutely what I would be doing um, on top of schedule content and responding to what could be hundreds or thousands of reviews when they come up in real time you know it's like it's like that it's complete total solution to this um, okay, so we're going to go to add photos right here in this 
box here. And this is where I spend the most of my week to week time, where I, you know, once a week, twice a week, I will find up to date content that I will put in there. And in this case, when I say content, I mean mainly photos or videos um, that are short, 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 short videos, if they are any. Um, so we're going to go. So I want to make sure I haven't posted any of these in here before I add them. I think I have based on the way they're named. Let's go to the unused because then we can guarantee that. Okay, so I'm gonna check out like one or two of these and drop them in. And if this was a task I was giving somebody else, I would have already had um, all the videos lined up and I would say, here is, an, here is a folder. Uh, I would say, that so we stay on the call I would say here's a folder filled with uh, you know however many shorts and however many photos I would like for you to put them on our Google business profile that would all already be set up for the person who's doing it so this part is what I'd be doing behind the scenes you wouldn't have to worry about that but I'm just gonna go ahead and sort through a few things and just remove the number there because that's not good SEO and we're going to get into the naming of this in just a second and make any changes. So you do kind of understand my thought process to doing this. Okay. So um, the algorithms are what you make of it and there are you know, millions of different keywords to rank for. I have built up enough awareness of my company and what I do to the point where I focus a lot more on the mindset of the people who are searching for these things. So something like unlocking, let's see, it's kind of hard to read. Might have to make that bigger, but anyway, unlocking social media marketing um, is a more specific keyword than just saying social media marketing. Um, I'm trying to not go super broad with my keywords because that attracts people who are um, new to the subject, typically. Transforming your business by addressing customer pain points. That is a higher level of, of understanding, like we're getting to the nitty gritty. I want to address my clients' pain points and I want to attract people that are looking to do that, to solve problems and create solutions and long lasting business. Solving prospects problems, proven case studies. So it's kind of similar to this su subject, but this involves um, some, you know, some evidence and studies to show this. These are three perfect things that would be great to put in now with the new year and new me vibe as this is filmed on New Year's. But in general, it's, you know, it's relevant. It's gonna say pending. Um, this is not like Facebook or Instagram or something else where it goes out automatically. Google vets every single post and they make sure that it complies with their standards before it goes out. This could be minutes, hours, days. Usually for us, it's just hours, um, maybe not even, maybe an, an hour. And as you can see, there's tons on there or in here rather. Um, and I could put, you know, anywhere between, I think, 20 to 30 at a time, depending on the size of the post. I usually just do a few at a time because you know, frequency matters to this too, for some extent. I wanted to come in a couple times a week. I don't necessarily need to dump 80 million things when I do. I just, you know, we post three to five times a day on every platform, so quite a lot. Um, and I'm going to keep this and put this in here. And I have this that I'm gonna put in here. And that's going to be put aside because next round of content, I want to touch on these topics on other platforms too. So that's going to be for me to put aside. So it goes out in within the next, you know, few weeks to a month, let's say, um, because I thought all three of those worked as a post and I wanted to see the light of day besides just Google business profile. 
Um, but as far as regular maintenance goes, the deep dive, you know, adjusting or adding the setup of the keywords is fairly easy. Um, there, are, there is a new profile that I'll be starting sometime soon. I'll try to remember to film something that is brand new or at least untouched rather. It's been around but hasn't been touched. So as far as I'm concerned, the optimization is, is fairly new. As you saw, it needed to be verified first and that does not start um, our, you know, our our next steps with them don't start until um, the middle of next month. So um, I'll try to remember to film something then so that the initial setup is also documented too. But, um, you know, assuming it's more of a maintenance thing, for the most part, you're just going to be coming in here, dropping in photos and videos, and it's super easy. The, the important thing to remember is that you um, name the photos or the videos a relevant keyword that is something that someone would search for. Um, something like this, real example, I would not put that on there. Nobody's searching for marketing companies saying real example. They're looking for an example to do it themselves, um, maybe, but nobody's searching for that, actually looking for a marketing agency. Figuring out ways to uh, to transform your business of social media marketing, that's the kind of stuff we're looking for, the kind of searches that we're looking for people to make and there we pop up. So, um, and go back. Those uh, that we went over was from Opus Pro, which is a AI tool that we use to help us with some of these shorts. They come up with a lot of these names based on the inputs we give them. Um, I have separate videos about that. I've talked to some of you guys about that. Um, it is something that more of us will be using soon, but you know, again, for the purposes of this, we're dealing with with posts that have already been made and edited. Um, as far as the editing process, you know, that's a whole other separate thing that you know you can use something like Opus Pro, Canva. There's lots of different ways to do that. That's not what this is about. But if there's any questions about that. Uh, Opus, Canva, or anything else, definitely respond to this. Let me know if you have any questions. And otherwise, that will be it for this tutorial. Thank you.